with us as we explore the mystical effects of anesthetics. When I count to three, you will fall asleep. One, two, three. Whoa, okay, who was that? It sounded like a voice in my head. Did, did you guys hear that too? Anyways, he was right. We are covering the anesthetics, but not all of them. You see, we've got a lot of drugs in our arsenal to use for anesthesia, but none of them can achieve all of the effects that we'd like, like unconsciousness, amnesia, analgesia, autonomic reflex inhibition, and skeletal muscle relaxation. So we have to use combinations of various medications, including both IV and inhaled anesthetics. In this sketch, we'll cover the ones that are administered intravenously. And that's why throughout these dank, narrow streets, we've incorporated our recurring symbol for IV administration. That climbing IV IV. Oh, cool! It looks like a street fair. Huh. Anestio. Okay, weird name, but I wonder what he does. It's fall asleep. Hmm. <gasps> you know, I'm, I'm getting a little, uh... Thanks for letting me touch your hair, John Stamos. What? Oh, gee. Where, where am I? Oh, 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 that, God, that, that sign is really hypnotizing. Knocked me out like an embryology lecture. Okay, so general anesthesia has three phases. Induction, maintenance, and emergence or recovery. IV anesthetics are most commonly used to achieve the rapid induction of anesthesia. So think of this great big introducing sign. 